Robert here with Fiddleback Forge, and it's another amazing Fiddleback Friday. Not only do we have knives, but we've got this amazing collector piece right here from Alan Searles, W.A. Searles. This is the Splinter model, and this thing has a bone handle that is from a mammal that went extinct before George Washington was President of the United States. That's right. It's old. And this thing is awesome and very cool with copper accents, Damascus blade guard. I'm going to show you some close-ups of that right now so you can get a little better idea. It even comes with a really awesome stand made from a boar's jaw. Doesn't get any more cool, collector, awesome than that right there. And we've also got these nine amazing knives from Fiddleback Forge, Kohata Knife Company, Warlander Enterprises, JB Knife Works, and a Mulgi Knife Company, and I'm going to show you what those knives look like in hand coming up next. Stick around. All right, so I am standing in the new shipping department for Fiddleback Outpost's new office that we just moved into, so it's been a chaotic week. And believe it or not, this is the best background and best sound and best lighting that we've had so far because the studio in the new office is not complete and everything has a crazy echo. However, you did not come here for that anyway. You came here to see Amazing Knives in Hand so you know what's going to show up in your mailbox next week. And if you're new around here and you hadn't had a Fiddleback Forge knife before or participated in Fiddleback Friday, you might not know how to get one of these Amazing Knives. And we make it pretty simple. You go to fiddlebackforge.com slash Friday. That's where we post knives every single Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, even though it almost didn't happen this week because of the Rona. But made it through. Everybody's good. Everybody's on the mend. I didn't have it. I've already had it. Good to go. But almost didn't happen. So if it seems like slim pickings this week, that's why it's us making some adjustments and making sure that you had amazing knives and again, they go up 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tonight on Friday, as they do every single Friday. Now, if you need a little more information in order to make a great buying decision, of course, uh, you can also check out the photo preview that we release every single week as well. You can find those at fiddlebackforge.com slash preview, and you got all the specs, all the pricing, along with a couple of really nice photos to help you make your buying decision of what you're going to add to your knife collection next. But... Hey, without further delay, and before I accidentally cut myself, let's go ahead and go to the in hand. Now let's get it started with the beast that barely fits in the booth here. Uh, and do the best I can to show you the details on this. Like the amazing hammer work on the spine. Running down the length of the spine until you get to that sweet harpoon tip swedge. Really nice touch. Also adds some tip strength as well, which is very welcome. Of course, this is brought to you by Mr. Alan Searles, W.A. Searles. And the detail on this thing is absolutely amazing. It's got the hammer textured copper. Got the hammer textured multicolor Damascus. I can't turn it enough to actually show you. Let me see if I can here. To actually show you. The detail on the color of that thing is absolutely astonishing. Really awesome stuff. And of course, the real show-stopping part is the handle, of course, which is literally from an animal that has been extinct longer than the United States has been the United States. That is Ancient Stellar's Sea Cow Rib Bone. Yes. That is definitely a mouthful. Ancient Stellar's Sea Cow Rib Bone. And those went extinct. The Stellar Sea Cows went extinct in the 1770s. So very, very old piece of handle material right there. Of course, got the copper pen and accents. I can tell you the shape of this fits the human hand a lot better than you would think that it would. Uh, and fits a little bit better in a right hand than a left. Um, just for me, having it in both hands, I can tell you it feels a little bit better in the right hand than the left. But uh, absolutely stunning work right there by Alan Searles. 
W.A. Searles, that is the Splinter. All right, next up, another beast of a blade. This is the JB Knifeworks Kukrish and Double Mint Jade G10, as you can see there, natural liners and the lime pinstripes and the tapered tang and all the goodness. Uh, this one in particular, 10 and 1 8 inch on the blade that is obviously meant to do some serious chopping business. And to top it off, 3 16 8670 on the steel means that it can do the job very, very well because 8670 is very, very tough steel. This is a pretty awesome piece of steel right here. 15 and 1 8 inch overall. The handle is fantastic. I'd say it's probably perfect for this type of blade. And it really locks your hand in. You got a really nice finger guard right there, which you really want when you're slinging this thing. Um, as well, but also the recurve being right here on the back uh, Portion of the blade is really really good for your fine detail work and this thing's balanced pretty well where it's not Super heavy toward the blade end uh, your balance point is about right in here uh, That's going to make it good for holding and doing the fine detail work without feeling like it's going to come out of your hand If you're chopping and need to choke up on it that pommel right there is really made well for that with the flare out but it really just locks in hand. It's a great, great shape for that. Beautiful job on the grind and everything else. As usual with Joey, uh, can't go wrong with JV Knifeworks, man. That Kukrish is the business right there. Let's set that one right over here. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to tell you on the WA Searle Splinter, uh, 16 inches on the blade and 25 and a half inches overall. So definitely a beast. Uh, you can tell sitting next to the Kukrish right here uh, just how big it is because the Kukrish is already over 15 inches overall, which is a pretty pretty good size for sure. Uh, but you can tell how much larger the sword is than that. Pretty awesome. All right, sticking with JB Knifeworks, this is his Shady Baby model, which is a great EDC blade. Three and, a, three and one eighths inch on the blade, so it makes a really ideal size uh, for your larger EDC. Um, overall, about seven and three eighths, so nice four finger grip on that. Comfortable pretty much no matter how you hold it. Uh, and as usual with JB Knifeworks, kind of has more of that pommel flare back here. Kind of locks your hand in a little bit better, keeps it from sliding out of your hand. Really nice indexing and finger guard right there as well. And can't say enough about antique ivory paper micarta, really cool stuff especially when it's paired with the natural liners with those thin golden pinstripes. Really nice touch, uh, really well done. Of course, he's tossed in a tapered tang, as you can see right there. Gorgeous, really well done, really great knife. W2 is the steel, in case you didn't know, with the uh, Hamon on there as well. Really beautifully done as well. Man, I like W2, that's a great knife. That's a shady baby. And uh, set that one right there. All right, next up, Kohuta Knife Company. You are used to seeing Kohuta put out some of the most awesome bushcraft knives on the market. But alas, Russell can do a killer EDC as well. As you can see right here, this is the Midge, which uh, is the smallest Kohuta knife you can get if memory serves. This one in particular is in Tasmanian Blackwood, which I absolutely love it is gorgeous as close to koa as you can get without being koa and i'm a big fan of koa so i'm a big fan of tasmanian blackwood too i might even like tasmanian blackwood better than koa how about that really awesome stuff black liners red pen stripes on that bad boy the midge is rocking a massive two and one quarter inch blade that's right a massive two and one quarter inches at five and three eighths inch overall. Nice little three finger knife, pinky tucks in nice behind it. Feels good in the hand, good indexing. You know where it's at, no matter how you're holding it or moving it. Perfect for an EDC if you ask me. 330 seconds A2 steel. He's got that killer hammer texture on there with the force patina. Really like that. Skeletonized full tang, of course. Beautiful, beautiful knife from Kohada right there, the midge. Next up from Kohuta is an absolutely gorgeous knife, as you can see here. This one right here is the 
Strabeg model, named after a very good friend of ours who is a always a fantastic supporter of Fiddleback family, Mr. Eric Strabeg. Shout out to my brother. This one right here is rocking ironwood, and you can never go wrong with ironwood, and you definitely can't go wrong when you throw in some natural liners and the blue pinstripes and a sick tapered tank. That's right. That knife right there has it all. I love it. Feels great in the hand, of course. Great four finger grip. You always know where it is. Very, very comfortable. That knife is winner, winner, chicken dinner all day long. Three and three quarters inch on the blade, eight and five eighths inch overall, one eighth inch on the A2 steel with the hammer textured and that forced patina. You want to talk about perfect. That knife right there has all the details and all the details are done right. It's even chamfered up to about right there. So it's comfortable in your hand, no matter what finger you're putting on top of that blade for leverage, you're going to be comfortable. But if you need to strike a ferro rod, you got a sharp 90 out there towards the tip so you can strike that ferro rod. So awesome, awesome knife as usual from Mr. Russell Reese, Kohata Knife Company. That is the Strabic. And speaking of a knife with all the details done perfectly right, this right here, Orlander Enterprises Mesquite model, rock and royal purple, G10, beautifully done, of course. Ivory G10 for the bolsters. This thing is beautiful. Perfectly done, black liners, purple pinstripes. Absolutely stunning. Three and three quarters inch on the blade, which is 8670 steel. Nice, just super duper beautiful. Eight and three eighths inch overall. This model I like a lot. It just really feels good in the hand. Nice four finger grip. Just tends to fall in the right place. It tends to be balanced right. Balanced right there between those two sets of pins right there. So it just always feels very, very stable. Very, very confidence inspiring in hand. Really cool knife. And of course, showing off a little bit throwing in that nice taper tang on the end absolutely beautiful knife from amy she did a killer job on that and of course when it comes to warlander enterprises here's the infomercial but wait there's more moment right here because with amy's knives warlander enterprises she's a fantastic sheath maker as well and this one comes with the matching sheath with of course the purple thread on top of that basket weave Gorgeous, absolutely amazing knife right there from Amy, Warlander Enterprises. But maybe you're looking for a Warlander knife that uh, fits a little better in maybe your pocket instead of a belt sheath, maybe something a little more EDC size. Can't do much better than this Skoder right here in Ruby G10. And that color is absolutely popping. You need to hop over to the website uh, on the preview and uh, take a look at the photos and how much that red really pops just in case this video isn't showing it because it's gorgeous. It absolutely finished wonderfully. Black liners, yellow pinstripes. The blade is about two and five eighths inch on that. Really nice, really nice shape. Very, very comfortable in hand. This is one of my favorite EDC models as far as shape. It's just got a super sexy shape, but it feels really good in your hand. You can pretty much get four fingers on it, although the pommel tends to kind of disappear in your hand if they're size like mine. But man, that thing just feels great. It's a really great model. Uh, 330 seconds, 8670 on the steel. Skeletonized tang, as you can see there. Beautifully finished, as are all of Amy's knives. But wait, there's more. You knew that moment was coming. Because this bad boy comes with its own sheath as well, as you may have imagined. But this one has got a pocket clip on it with some fantastic retention. Uh, the shape of that and the way that that retention clip is made on there as well, uh, this will work really good on a belt also and lock into place. You won't have to worry about it coming on and off as you, as you pull the knife in and out as you purchase it from the sheath. It's really, really great sheath, as are all of Amy's leather works. Very well done, as is the knife, of course. Next up, Fiddleback Forge, because you can't have Fiddleback Friday without Fiddleback Forge. Although this week, you almost did. But alas, we saved the day. Here is a bush boot. And man, bush boots are already super sexy knives. Let's admit it. But this one, this one's even more gorgeous because of that Masseur Birch right there. I love that stuff. Can't get enough of it. It's absolutely stunning. And when you throw in natural liners and you pop, throw in a little pop of color with that Tiffany blue pinstripes, 
man, that thing is winter all day long. Three and a quarter inch on the blade, seven and a quarter inch overall, full four finger grip all day. That arch shape right there just really rests in the hand very, very nicely. Balance point on that bad boy is right there in between the two sets of pins. Just perfectly done. Eighth inch, 8670 on the steel. Uh, with Fiddleback Forge knives, you can always tell the steel based on the texture on the flats. Uh, that particular shape of hammer texture is always 8670. So you can always tell what kind of steel you're getting with Fiddleback Forge. If you happen to pick up one on the second hand market, uh, that's how you can tell. Skeletonized full tang. Beautifully done. Great, great knife. Bush boot, that one's going to sell super duper quick, guaranteed. If you want that, you better be quick, quick, quick. Now, if you're going to have a Fiddleback Friday with only two Fiddleback Forge knives, you might as well make one as awesome as that Bush boot and then follow it up with one as awesome as this Gunstock Bushcrafter is right here. Of course, getting its name Gunstock from the shape of that handle being so very unique and shaped like a Gunstock. And at nine and a quarter inches overall with a four and three eighths inch blade, you got plenty of handle to do everything you want. And it really locks into your palm, locks in between your fingers down here to give you a lot of power transfer on that great shape of a blade right there. And you've got all kinds of options with that handle because of the shape. And it seems like no matter how you hold it and how you use it, it's just comfortable in your hand no matter what and giving you a lot of options there. 530 seconds, A2 steel, you can tell by the spalted texture. Remember how I said Fiddleback Forge knives, the texture on the flats is always the same depending on the, si the type of steel that you got. So you always know what kind of steel you're looking at if you're looking at one on the second hand market or even on a dealer site or whatnot. I uh, got the Trinity pen out rocking right there. Taper tang, oh yeah, got one of those as well sweet taper tang on that bad boy right there gunstock bushcrafter that's that thing's a winner all day long beautiful beautiful knife and last but not least to wrap up this fiddleback friday okmogi knife company this is his shoal model which is a bird and trout which you can obviously tell by looking at it really great handle shape for such indexing just really locks you into this bad boy so when you're cleaning small game or fish, you definitely want something that's gonna stay in your hand when it gets wet or slippery. And uh, because of that indexing, it's going to do the job nicely. Uh, Lee is a, an avid outdoorsman, so he knows what he likes in an outdoor knife, and he transfers that into the knives and the designs that he makes, and it really, really shows. Uh, black burlap micarta on the handle, black liners, red pinstripes, three and three quarters inch on that blade right there eight inch overall feels really good in hand what a what a super great knife for a bird and trout 330 seconds cpm 154 so if you're worried about something that uh, gets too much patina or you have to worry about rust or anything like that obviously using it in wet environments uh, cpm 154 is going to be a lot better for that than a carbon steel uh, so that was put into thought as well I even tossed in a taper tang on that. So at this point, Lee's just starting to show off a little bit. Okmogi Knife Company, wrapping up Fiddleback Friday, guys. Life's too short to carry an ugly knife or an ugly sword or an ugly kukrish. So get yourself a Fiddleback or one from the Fiddleback family or the sweet Okmogi Knife Company knife right here. We will see you guys next week with more knives.